Okay, so in this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about module 7. Um, it says it's worth 15 points out of the 100, um, but I'm going to talk about contingency tables here, and that contingency tables also comes um, from module 6. So what I'm talking about here, it is worth quite a bit more than that, actually. A contingency table is, is a pretty important part of this exam, and you definitely want to make sure that you know how to, you know, you're comfortable with solving probabilities uh, given a table, okay? All right, so uh, let's go ahead and go through this list. So using multiplication rule, okay? So remember the multiplication rule was that the probability of event A and B equals the probability of event A times the probability of event B given that A already happened. Right? So that's why it's called multiplication rule, because you're multiplying these probabilities together. Okay? And then, of course, if A and B are independent, meaning B does not depend on A, then if A and B are independent, then it's just the product of the two, probability of A times probability of B. So if A and B are independent. Okay, all right, so let's do an example. So a bag contains three red balls, two blue balls, and one purple ball. So two balls are randomly selected without replacement. Now, whenever you see without replacement, that, that's creating some sort of dependent structure, right? Because once I've selected one ball from the bag, that ball is no longer in the bag. And so that changes the probability involved in selecting the next ball. Okay, so when you have without replacement, you're not in this situation of independence. Okay, so find the probability of selecting one red ball and one blue ball. So what we want to know is what's the probability of getting a red and a blue. Okay, so this would be the probability of getting a red times the probability of getting a blue given that you already got a red. Right, that's the multiplication rule. So what's the probability of getting a red ball? Well, there's three red balls out of, looks like there's a total of six balls, right? Yep, six balls total. So this multiplied by probability of getting a blue ball. Well, there's two blue balls. Now you already got a red ball, so there's no longer six balls in the bag. There's only five balls left in the bag because you're selecting without replacement. So you can go ahead and simplify this. This is 1 half times 2 fifths. The 2's cancel, and you're left with 1 fifth. Okay? All right. So what's the, uh, let's find the next one. What's the probability of selecting three red balls? So what's the probability of getting a red, a red, and a red? I'll use little notation to note that these are different balls. So red 1, red 2, red 3. So we need to extend the multiplication rule to now we have three things that are being sampled. Okay, so we have the first red ball selected, then multiply that by the second ball being selected given that the first one's already selected, and then the third one, the third ball is selected given that the first two now were already selected. Okay, so and we could, you know, Theoretically, we can continue this, keep on selecting until all the balls, balls out of the bag are selected, right? But we're just doing three balls, and the probability all three are red. Okay. So the probability that the first one is red is three out of six. Now, the probability that the second one is red, given the first one was already selected. So what do you have left in your bag? You only have two red balls left, because one was already selected. And there's only five balls in the bag. Now, the probability that the third one is selected, so there's only one left now and you, you only have four balls in the back, okay? All right, then you can simplify this, multiply this across. I'll leave that to you, all right? Lastly, what if we don't use replacement? So, oh, sorry, what if we do use replacement? So four balls now being selected, this time with replacement, all right? So what happens on the second pick it's completely independent of what happens on the first pick because you threw the ball back in the back. So this is independence, right? Now we have independent events, right? All right, 
So find the probability of randomly selecting two red balls and two purple. So the probability of getting a red one, a red two, a purple one, and a purple two. Now you might be saying, well, I only have one purple ball. Remember, if I go up, I only had one purple ball. So how can I select two purple balls? Well, because we're using replacement this time, that is possible, right? The ball gets replaced after it's selected. So this one would just be probability of getting the red ball times probability of getting a red ball times the probability of getting a purple ball times the probability of getting a purple ball, right? Because here, there's no need to condition on the fact that we already got a red ball because the re this red ball that was selected was put back in the bag, so the bag goes back to having six balls. So this is three out of six. This is three out of six, you multiplying. This is one out of six, and this is one out of six. So I'll leave this to you to simplify. All right, so that's the multiplication rule. So next let's talk about conditional probability. I have a conditional probability example over here. So in America, 8% are veterans. Okay, not that 8% 8, 8 are currently active duty, but 8% are veterans, okay? Have served at least, have served in their lifetime. So 1.2% uh, are female veterans, so they're both female and a veteran, and 68 are male veterans, okay? So in America, oh sorry, an American is randomly selected, find the probability that they are female Oops, I forgot the end there. Given, given that they are a veteran. All right, so I'm going to use F for female and V for veteran. So they are female given that they are veteran. All right, so you need to know the uh, formula for calculating a conditional probability. So it's given that they're veterans, so that's why it's behind this bar, right? This bar means given. So female, given, veteran, that's how you read this. Okay, so to calculate this probability, you need to know the formula. So this is the probability of veteran, or female and veteran, divided by whatever has been given, okay? So whatever's on the right-hand side of this given, that's in the denominator. So the probability of both divided by the, the part that's been given. All right, so now what's the probability of being a female and a veteran? Well, let's see. Looks like 0 0.012 because 1.2% are veterans or female veterans. So that's female and veteran divided by 0 0.08, right? 8% are veterans. So the probability of being a veteran is 0 0.08. So if you do this, let me go ahead and do it on my calculator. Comes out to be 0.15. Okay? So the probability of being a female, given that you are a veteran, or that that, that the person is a veteran, is 0.15. Or 15% of the veterans are females, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and go on to an example where we have the contingency table. So that's the last thing on my checklist. Let me go ahead and double check. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do a contingency table type problem. And we'll do conditional probability, but we're also gonna do stuff from module six with this contingency table. All right. So the following table as the university's enrollment status and gender. Okay, so we have 630 female undergraduates, uh, 10, 35 male undergraduates. I think a great way to start this type of problem whenever you see a table is go ahead and add up your totals. So uh, 630 plus 10, uh, 35 is 1665. So we have 1665 undergraduates, right? So I just added those two together. Then 501 plus 725, I have 1226 graduates, okay? How many females do I have? Let's add that up. So 630 plus 501, 
is 11, 31 females, okay? How many males do I have? 1035 plus 725, all right? I have 7, 6, 17, 60. Okay, then add up the total total. So 1760 plus 1131. So if I add up this, I get 2891. If I add it up in this direction too, I should still get that. So 1665 plus 1226 is the same number, 2891. And if you, this didn't add up to the same number, then you made a mistake in your addition somewhere. Okay, so then now when I'm calculating all these different probabilities, it's going to be easier now that I have these column and row totals. All right, so let's go ahead and start here. We have what's the probability a randomly selected student is an undergraduate? So let me use U for undergraduate. Um, so probability of being an undergraduate, well, how many undergraduates do I have? I have 16, 65. See, that's why that column total is nice, right? Divided by 28. 91. I can leave it like that or I could simplify it. Uh, it's okay either way. So find the probability a uh, randomly selected student is a female. So I use F for female. So how many females I have? 630 plus 501. So I have 1131 divided by 2891. Okay. Find the probability that a randomly selected student is undergraduate and female. Okay, so how many of these guys are undergraduates and females? So I'll go ahead and do this. Undergraduates and female. Well, it looks like I have 630 people that are female and an undergraduate, right? So 630 divided by 2891. Okay, so now find the probability a randomly selected student is an undergraduate or female. So remember, in statistics, we use the or is like an inclusive or. So it means that they're undergraduate or they're female, like either one, either 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 or, right? So that's what that means, either or. So um, one way students can do this is you can say, well, go through each of these columns and, and try to say, is this person an undergraduate or female? So is this one an undergraduate or female? Yes, they're female and an undergraduate, actually. Is this group undergraduate or female? Yes, because they're female. Is this is this group here, are they undergraduate or female? Yes, because they're an undergraduate. Are these guys, um, these male, undergra male graduates, are they undergraduate or female? No, that's the only one that didn't work, right? So what I could do is I could add up, I could add up 630 plus 501 plus 1035, and then divide that by 2891. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. 630 plus 501 plus 1035, and what I get is 2166 divided by 2891. Okay, so that's one way to solve this problem. Another way to solve it is to use the addition formula. Okay. So the addition formula says that this probability is the probability of U plus the probability of F minus the probability of U and F. Okay, you'll get the same answer. So let's go ahead and do this. U was 1665 divided by 2891. Female was 1131 divided by 2891, and then uh, being both was 630 divided by 2891, right? I'm just using these answers right here, okay? So let me go ahead and scroll over a little bit. So let's go ahead and plug that into our calculator. We can do those numerators. 1665 plus 1131 minus 630, what do I get? I get 21. 66, right? And they all have the same denominator, so that's why I was able to go straight across there. So the denominator is still 2891. All right, so you get the same answer that you would get had you kind of just thought through it logically. Um, 
So you, you have a choice there whether or not you want to use the formula or if you want to use just looking at the table and thinking through it logically. All right, so um, let's go ahead and, so now we have these conditional probability ones. How do I know they're conditional probability? Because they have the word given, right? So find the probability that a randomly selected student is a female. So I'm trying to find the probability that they are female given that they are an undergraduate. All right. So this I, I could use the, the conditional probability formula that we used in the previous problem, but it's way more complicated and not recommended um, than just thinking through it logically. OK, so when something's given, that means they belong to this group. So my denominator, instead of it being the total number of people, uh, it's just going to be the number of undergrads, right? They belong to the undergrad, so I do not have graduate students basically in my population anymore. It's one way of thinking about it. Okay, so my group is this 1665. So my total is 1665, right? Because it's given that they belong to this group. So what's the probability of being a female, considering that they belong to the undergrads? So it's like basically like this is now my population, right? This is like, this is it. This is my population, okay? So how many of these guys are female? Well, 630 of them are female. So that's it. 630, that's it, okay? So let's do one more example. Find the probability the randomly selected student is a graduate student given that they are male. So now it's been given, so I have graduate student, given that they are male. So now my group is just the men, right? So if I go up there, let me use a different color. So right now I'm just talking about the men. This is my population, the men right here, okay? So how many are in this population of men? There's 1760 of them, so that's my denominator, okay? 1760. All right, and how many of them are graduate students? So of those 1760, 725 are graduate students. So I'll go ahead and write that. 725. All right, so um, if you have any questions about contingency tables, please post that on the discussion board uh, for this exam. Um, Got to feel comfortable on figuring out prob different probabilities given a contingency table like this. Um, so in the next video, I'll go ahead and talk about module eight.